and welcome to level 2 of my mini-series, Learning the Handstand. In this level, well, first, let's recap about what we learned in level 1. We went over the hollow body hold, learned why it's important to learn that in order to have a straight and stable handstand and build a strong core. Here's an example, the banana handstand. This is due to an anterior pelvic tilt. It throws your body out of alignment, and this is a very common problem. By going into a posterior pelvic tilt and holding this position, we're in a much stable, much more stable position. So, go over level one if you haven't learned that, and get that posterior pelvic tilt down. All right, so the way you grip the ground during a handstand is also very important. This is often very overlooked. So what I do is squeeze the ground by keeping my fingertips flat and opening up this middle section right here. So I'm bending my fingers, but I'm keeping my fingertips flat. And my palms are solid on the ground. So practice getting this grip. If your pinkies won't bend, that's all right. I have one pinky that won't bend all the way. And this is important because when I'm balancing during a handstand, I'm switching the pressure off between my wrists and my fingertips. And when my fingertips are bent like this, when I'm falling forward, I'm in a better position to squeeze them to prevent myself from falling. And it's way easier to balance this way. During a handstand, obviously there's a lot of pressure on our wrists, so we're going to start getting used to that now. Arms shoulder width apart, hands facing forward. Don't forget about that finger grip. We're gonna start doing it now, just so we can get used to it. Really embed it into our heads. Protract your shoulders and lean forward. Lean forward far enough until you feel a slight discomfort, but not too far forward to where it hurts. Hold that for about 10 seconds and then stretch your wrists in the opposite directions for a little bit. Shake your hands off. And when you feel ready, do it again. Repeat this many times and do this very often. This is going to improve your wrist flexibility and it's going to get you accustomed to putting that pressure onto your wrists, which you're going to need when holding a handstand. In order to have a straight handstand, you need to have a good shoulder flexibility. We're going to stretch our shoulders two different ways. The first way, we're going to grab a resistance band, a stick, or a towel, or a belt, whatever you can find. Grab it at a wide position. Your hands are wide, far enough so that you can get your hands down to your lower back. So we're shrugging our shoulders out, and then we're stretching all the way down. And then we're going to bring it up. The second way you should stretch your shoulders is by grabbing the band or stick shoulder width apart, the way our hands are going to be in during a place in a handstand. Don't forget that posterior pelvic tilt. And then from there, make sure you lift your shoulders up, shrug them out, and then stretch them back while you're holding that posterior pelvic tilt. So we're going to learn three exercises that are going to help us build up our body strength and just get accustomed to having our hands on the floor, something we're not really used to. So arm shoulder width apart, hands facing forward, remember that finger grip. And this first exercise, I just call them side hops. We have that sturdy hand position with the finger grip in place and we're just hopping left to right. Now you can practice this with straight arms and you can practice this with bent arms.
So now that you've got these side hops down, you're ready to move on to monkey hops. Now this is one of my favorites. So we're moving our arms first, and then our feet are following. So the first way I'm showing you right now, I'm keeping my feet and my hands aligned with one another. This is a bit of an easier way to do it. If you want to make this exercise a little bit harder, you can jump opposite foot to opposite hand. As you can see, my right foot landed behind my left hand, and vice versa. This is ideally the way you should practice it if you're able to do this right away. If not, do it the first way and progress. And then practice monkey hopping side to side, forwards, backwards, diagonally, turn while you jump. Just get really creative with your monkey hops. That's right, you read that right, the third exercise is car wheels. Car wheel is very important for many reasons. First of all, most people kick off into a handstand, at least when they're first learning right away. They'll kick off with the right foot or the left foot. So the car wheel is going to kind of help us get used to doing this kick off. This is going to give us a little more confidence by the time we do start doing this. It's also going to give us confidence for when we have to fall, when we have to bail on a handstand. Because when we get into a handstand and we're falling off, we usually fall into, into like a messed up cartwheel. See? That's how I fall out of a handstand if I'm going to fall. So, that's why it's really important to learn how to cartwheel. And cartwheel often. So starting off with the leg that you feel comfortable kicking off with, for me it's my right leg. Point your foot in the direction that you're going to cartwheel in, align your thumb with your foot so your hand's actually coming down to the side, your thumb should be pointing upwards, then your other hand is just going to come around facing the same direction, and kick off with your leg, and just kick all the way through. Now you should probably really practice cartwheeling both ways, but it's not absolutely necessary. If you only want to practice with the foot that you feel comfortable kicking off with, then that's what's important for now. Another way to practice cartwheels is by doing it down in the monkey hop position. This is a good way to switch it up and you can add fun combinations by monkey hopping around and going straight into a cartwheel. So do lots of cartwheels and lots of monkey hops because this is going to improve your upper body strength, it's going to improve your coordination, and it's going to improve your confidence for when you're actually holding a handstand. And eventually, your cartwheels will slow down, and so will your monkey hops. So, stay tuned for learning the handstand level 3.